Mani, for your time. We thank you. Let's begin with the issue of Steinoff. Or should we even go a little bit further and include one of your members with the issue of KPMG? I don't think we've had a chat with you since then. Um, I know that uh, the KPMG CEO is, is uh, uh, an active member who attends those things. I know because I trolled her on Twitter before I had a conversation with her. But what do you make of the current landscape, which, you know, according to some, some observers who are looking on, uh, through the social media spectrum, say that you know it's really just um, you know a select club of rich white people who get in trouble and then they appoint the black person to come and clean up the mess. So, so I, I think let's let's start broadly. Oh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm glad to be here. So, so I think what is happening in corporate South Africa today it's it's disheartening. Uh, so it's a very huge disappointment. Uh, because the people who lead these corporates are the people who are who, are, who should be educated, who should be have a great know-how in terms of how best to be able to do these things. But they're the ones that have been have been disappointing. So the corporate lapses, uh, corporate governance lapses, it's a it's a reflection of the values that uh, these individuals are, are holding. Uh, hence, we find ourselves in the crisis that we find well, ourselves in. I'll generalize all of them unless you have a specific one. I, I think KPMG, well, I didn't think it started there. It has been there, but I think it has been a massive highlight in terms of what has been happening. Because, I mean, we know about Trillion, you know, McKinsey has all these sort of issues and problems that we've been uh, uh, dealing with. It's a reflection that corruption itself, uh, it's not a government or a public sector phenomenon. Uh, it, it's across uh, sectors. And even those that we we have trusted or entrusted in terms of driving and shaping the economic direction mm -hmm. of our country are, are, are involved around it. So, but with KPMG, we, 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 we're comfortable that uh, there is an investigation that is underway, uh, uh, led by advocate Dumi Sanzebeza. And uh, I mean, being, being a, a professional that he is with a massive track record and a team that has been supporting him, uh, we are comfortable that the outcome will be credible and then they will try to redress the challenges that we've been facing. But I think the law must take, uh, must take course. It must bite, and there must be consequences for this kind of behavior, because it has been going on for, for too long. And which basically is a reflection of why change and transformation is not happening in our society, because the people who are entrusted with power mm -hmm. and influence, they have to dispense it, are the ones basically they have, they are harboring all these views that are ill and the, it, there's greed that basically has to make sure that how do they mm. get ahead. Mm. And in terms of redressing the imbalances of the past, they will think about how do they beat the system mm. so that they could get an extra paycheck. Is South Africa paying, or corporate South Africa paying enough attention to issues of succession planning? So uh, in our view, from a BMF point of view, the answer is no. It's not enough. If it was doing enough, then there should be a critical mass of black managers or uh, at the top management level and executives. But the fact that uh, they are happening, then every time they happen, we celebrate. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an indictment in terms of they should have been happening enough to an extent that it's a new normal. Mm -hmm. uh, this this doesn't warrant us having dinners and issuing statements to celebrate all these type of appointments. So we believe that uh, a corporate South Africa is not doing enough. And a reflection of them was some of the companies that will come up with these concepts of joint CEOs. It's a poor reflection that they never thought deeply and hard about succession planning. It's as if that they've been just caught napping and then they will come up with whatever uh, solution that they need to come up with. Uh, uh, when it comes to these joint CEOs. I thought about that, especially once uh, Standard Bank uh, scrapped the joint CEO thing. I'm like, BMF must be happy because it's been campaigning for yeah. this thing to happen already. So, but so, yeah, the, BMF, the it, it is. The, the, the indictment there, as you, as you were alluding to, is the fact that we have an opportunity to, in fact, when I, when I say we, I mean government, has yeah. the opportunity to enforce these changes to make sure that 23 years after the fact, we're not talking about the same issues of transformation that born a movement like yours, you know? But, I mean, after all the work that's been done by the likes of, you know, Dr. Don Kwaban, uh, um, we're still here talking about issues of transformation. So why can't government make sure that these things happen, that these things are imperatives and that the JSC holds these companies responsible? Uh, 
first, I think our government needs to, 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 to prioritize things correctly. Mm -hmm. Our government is always found napping uh, as far as, I mean, today there's a big fight about people trying to get their kids into, into, into a school to be taught in English. We shouldn't be having these uh, challenges that we are having. It's almost like a generation mm. uh, now since we've been liberated or at least being free, we shouldn't be having these kind of challenges. I think what needs to happen is that uh, the monitoring of the policies and the, uh, and the rule of law must, must be taken seriously. For example, there are companies that are still not submitting like their employment equity reports mm -hmm. to this day and government does nothing about it. And uh, you can't allow that situation to happen. So the law must take its course, it must bite, there must be a stick. And until and unless there is such a stick, then the behavior and the conduct of these companies is not going to change. And government must demonstrate that they are, they are in charge and they are responsible. You cannot just be a piecemeal uh, on the other pieces of legislation where it's necessary. For, for, for them to be seen to be in charge. It must be across the board as far as this thing is concerned. But lawlessness, it's a reflection of uh, people not having respect for the rule of law mm -hmm. and they think that they will get away with it. And corporate South Africa, for example, on issues and matters of transformation has been getting away with it for far too long. But Mwami, you just uh, spoke about lawlessness. How is it that we can get accountability going forward? I, I think what, 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 what we need to do is to use the, 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 rule, the pieces of legislation that we have. I mean, we have a company law that basically guides us around what needs to happen. But other than that, we have Employment Equity Act, we have a Black Economic Empowerment Act, we need to, to start doing those kind of things. I mean, one of the things that we want to challenge, uh, I think the government or, or legislators this year, is to make sure that we engage with them to make sure that there is a, there's a piece of legislation or policy that is backing up, for example, one of the initiatives that the BMF has managed to win to make sure that transformation becomes part of the listing requirements and, and companies need to disclose how are they faring as far as the race and, and gender is concerned on an annual basis. But remember, JSE is like a regulator, so it can't crack the whip, it can't penalize these people. So that's where legislation needs to come in to back up. I think I think our 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 legislators or lawmakers mm -hmm. they need to be alive to the challenges uh, and the problems that we face because sometimes we come up with the policies of the of the of the of the environment that we wish we had but not the environment that we currently have in South Africa today. I'm going to play a bit of a devil's advocate now, Mnani. If if there was a, I mean, uh, we heard uh, Deputy Minister of Finance, Futu Gutelezi, last year saying, intimating that the reason why Steinhoff finds itself in positions like this is because it does not have a diversity of views on its board. There are no women, there are, you know, not enough black people, you know, those kinds of things. My question is, shouldn't we rather, instead of, of uh, black business or, or black managers trying to get into white companies, shouldn't we be holding a black example of our own? That this is a black owned company listed, it runs a, a clean audit, it runs a, an ef efficient business, and it's great and it returns value to shareholders. <coughs> well, there are, there are such companies, and, and I mean, I don't belong to that school of thought, mm -hmm. to be honest, uh, but in essence, I'm not necessarily there's anything wrong with it. I would like to see more and more black enterprises flourishing and growing and being listed and, and, and even, even spreading their wings uh, beyond the borders of South Africa. I am for that. However, some people like to say these sort of things as if black people are not entitled to these companies, you see. These companies, after all, they are public entities, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, they, the why are you saying black people must have their own businesses? And then so we should leave these companies to be the fifth dome of, uh, and become a white enclave. And, and, and people just do as they wish, as if we don't belong there. These enterprises belong, all these companies that are listed in JSE, essentially, they are, they are public entities. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they have to account to, 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 the, to the public in terms of how they are doing things and issues of governance. And therefore, we have every right to claim to be, to be in the leadership of these companies, like how our white counterparts can claim uh, to, to be in those positions. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I must part on this question. 
when you look at some of those companies, some of these companies have been listed for a long time on the JSE, and they've never been led or been at a position where they are led by a black executives. Yeah. And I'm sure you have a list of these of these companies, yeah. and these companies refuse to give us the drip drip method, if you will, as to their transformation, which is happening at the non-existent pace really there yeah. is no pace there yeah. what do you say to those companies and how are you going to be approaching those companies this year are you going to be having a different modus operandi to how you challenge them so, so to I take up I the cost part of this i've just made one example to, to speak to the legislators to make sure that there's a there's a there's a there's a piece of to empower uh, the, the the existing uh, policies that are there to make sure to put them into effect. I, I, I think it's a question of effectiveness in terms of how effective are we as government in terms of managing and poli putting policy and ensuring that people adhere to policies. For example, other countries do do that. You can force transformation mm. to happen. Most of the Scandinavian countries, they come up with a policy to say there must be inclusion of women in boards. And then if you are not having 50% of women in board, that company gets delisted. It cannot be able to trade. It's a punishable offense. But they can effect the change by making sure that they penalize those who are not complying with those requirements. Mm. In this country, we have all these good policies. We have all this legislation in terms of what needs to happen, but nobody's prepared to crack the whip Enforcement. and make sure uh -huh. that it happens. Uh -huh. That's exactly, if a child, if your own child, uh, well, I have kids, I don't know if you have kids, so, so they don't want, they don't give you the results that you need to have, they don't give, they, they don't come up with the behavior that is expected as part of the family values in terms of how they should conduct themselves. You need to crack the whip mm. as a parent. You cannot go and complain to government or complain to your neighbors in terms of making sure that they must make sure they look. You must do something about it. So the power we gave to this government mm. to make sure that they can govern us and they can, they can take charge, but uh, we, don't, we, we, fell, they, 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 we, we fell short when it has to come to make sure that they're cracking the whip for transformation to happen. Well, that's Mnani Mtunzi, president of the Black Management Forum. I 